All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony again, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Nellie on the line. How are you, Nellie? I'm very good, and you, Ebony? I'm awesome, you guys. She is speaking with us from France and I'm in the US. So it's just awesome how modern day connect technology can connect us like this. So listen to the end. She's taking time from her busy schedule to connect with you today. And if you do listen to the end, you will have an opportunity to get a special gift. So, yes. Nellie, start us off just by telling us one motivational quote that really inspires you, something that motivates you and really gets you going. I mean, these days, I'm really about this quote which says, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to us, how we react to it. And it's from a Christian pastor, and when I first came across to the code, I was just like, oh my gosh, how can it be possible? I'm not sure it could be like this way, but I've just figured out why I started to meditate on this code. Like, it's true. I can't control what people say to me or do to me, but I can control how I choose to react to what they say or what they do to me. So I can choose to keep my peace, my inner peace, and not let all those things, I mean... This, um, disturb my peace or disturb my joy and I really think everyone should get to that point of the life which which is I can not be controlled by what the society wants me want me to be like or but I have to be me I have to be myself and I have to design my own life I have to live it the way I want to really I really want my life to be that safe. Yes. So understanding who we are and designing our life so that we can showcase our true authenticity is what's key to you. And that's also what's key to me as well. I feel like we attract so much more goodness and abundance into our life when we act in accordance to exactly who we are. And I think that too many times people try to compare themselves to other people and try to emulate what other people are doing when in all actuality you will feel so much more freedom and lightness just by being who you are and the right people will be attracted to that. That's true. Tell us really about a time when perhaps you had a goal in mind and you couldn't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel and you even had to overcome some obstacles. But at the end of the day, you remain true to who you are and you were able to see those goals to fruition. Yes, I mean, um, two years ago, I remember I was in a relationship with a guy and I was thinking that I was going to be, we were going to be married, I was going to have kids with him. I thought that I found my soulmate and it was just it. But things didn't go the way I planned because I must say it was, I mean, I was doing everything on my own and I started compromise my, compromising myself. I wasn't me again. I was all about him, everything I was doing it was for him. I didn't take care of my family, myself, my studies. It was just him. I just want to please him. So I start, started doing things that wasn't me. And it was really difficult for me. So because I thought that I won't be able to be me again after that. When we broke up, I was just like, oh my God, I have to that again I'm not I'm not sure I could do that again I'm really broken I'm tired I'm no more confident I don't know if, if people will like me the way I am because the relationship keep me away from my friends my family from everything that I love and I couldn't see myself because I thought that I was really in love with him but it wasn't love it was just I was dependent. I was really addicted to him. It was an addiction, not love, because I'm sure that love doesn't look like that. And I was just like, I can start again. I cannot start again. But one day, I was just like, 
girl, what are you doing with your life? You know you have one life and no one is going to live your life for you. You better get up and go after your dreams instead of laying in your bed and being mourning every day. No one is dead, not even you. So get back on your feet and go and live your life. It's okay. You will fall, but you have to get up no matter what happens to you. So that's how I start my healing process a little bit. And when I find out I was doing much better, I was happy. Without him in my life, I figure how I can do everything myself to that's how I start that and I start looking around me and I've seen that other women women are living the same battles I was in, but the thing that they cannot get up because they start thinking no one will understand would understand what I'm going through, but that's not true that's not the reality there are a lot of people out there who are living the same thing that we are in but the key to the healing process is to talk about it at least acknowledging what you are in and then let it go that's the only way you can be healed if not you will start i mean having things in yourself that are not good for you you will start meditating on bad thoughts and you will just attract what you are really in. And you attract what you believe. So if you believe that you are not worth for love, then you won't have love in your life. You will just attract bad guys or what you portray, that's it. I mean, if you, uh, you think that you are not worth for love, you are not worth for everything good in life, you will just attract bad things in life. And no one is to blame for that. It's yourself. Though. The moment you realize that you deserve good things, you deserve to live a better life, you deserve to live your dreams, you deserve to be you, then you will just attract people like you, people who share their authenticity, their uniqueness, people who are true to themselves, not just pretending or, I mean, acting or wanting to show something they are not. You will attract people they are really, really themselves, and that's how I start reading books about identity, about being myself. And I figure out it's all about our minds, the way we think. And that's how I changed my way of thinking. And I changed my life also. I wasn't about, oh, I'm not worth for love. I'm not confident. It wasn't that, yes, I have battles, I have fears, but I was more knowing my my I mean my strength than my weakness and I focus on my strength than my weakness because I know that my weakness today won't always be my weakness tomorrow they will be my strength and I just have to work on them so that tomorrow I could come then I could say wow there are no more my weakness there are no more my fears and that's it Yes, I love that. And I think that a lot of us can identify with being in a relationship that we had to leave or someone left us in a relationship and we had to discover how to heal and how to move past that so that we could go on with our life. And there are some people that are able to do that more effectively and a smoother process than others. But for many women, I think that that is a that is an area of concern where they begin to doubt themselves and lose confidence and maybe feel like they're unworthy. But I mm. love how you said that you took the situation after some time and you started to look within and really look to self-development so that you could become a better version of yourself. And I think that that is something that we're always on a continuous path to do. We have not ever gotten to a certain state and then said, okay, I can sit back and relax now. Some people do that, but as long as we're breathing, we're still growing and there's always room yes. to develop ourselves, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. I love that you chose to do that at a young age and turn what could have been a potentially negative situation in your mind into yes. a positive life situation. Tell us a little bit about your current day impact on social media because you have a genuine interest 
and inspiring and influencing others on social media. What sparked your interest in doing that? And what are some upcoming projects that you have in mind? So actually I'm having a blog and honestly in the blog I talk about my life of every day and I started because I was really, really frustrated of seeing other women dealing with the same issues I used to be I used to be dealing with. So I just asked God, Why do you want me to do? Am I supposed to look then just like okay, it will be okay, let it go. It's not, it's not, I mean, yes, I can say that, but it's not, there's more I can do. So I just say, okay, I will share my story because people are able of it to, to get through what they are going, to get past what they are going through in life when they can identify and identify themselves to someone. So I just say, okay, Lord, I will share my story. Even if I'm not comfortable with that, I will share my story. I will get out of my comfort zone and with my story. So other women, we know and we see that there are people like me who are dealing with the same issue. So I was, I just say, I will show my love the way I am. So I just start and with a little bit of quote of encouragement every day, but I'm not just about being there every day because I have a life too. So I don't want to be overwhelmed by these social media things. It's not good. I mean, you can use it in and or let it influence you. I don't want to be there again because I used to be the girl that who was looking at all those faces and I was just like, oh my God, why can't I be like them? But truth is, I can be like them. They are already taken. I have to be me. The world is waiting for me. The world is waiting to hear my story and to be encouraged by it. So that's why actually that I'm just having a blog and Instagram page and the blog is conversation with every team. I can di discuss every, I mean, everything. We could talk about sex, about faith, about, I don't know, everything I have in mind. And most importantly, everything that happens to us daily. So it's not just about pretending. It's really my life. It's really my story that I'm, I'm sharing there. And a project I'm working about creating a uh, an agency, a digital agency, because that's what I I study in school, and I really love the social media thing, internet, creating websites. Yes, that was uh that's what I'm working on actually. And by the grace of God, I hope it will be launched in January 2019. So that's it. Awesome. And I know it will be because you are passionate about it and you're going to make time to do it. And I think that for a lot of people, seeking that balance between family and their dreams uh, is significant with pushing our dreams into fruition. Tell us one thing that someone could do if they do not have a strong support system and they really want to get their dreams lifted off the ground. You know, again, I will talk about me. You know, I grew up with my dad and I didn't have my mom near to me, even if right now I'm living with with, uh, with my mom. So I was, I grew up with doing things by myself because my father was always traveling. So I was on my own and I have friends, but there were weren't always supportive and even now they aren't so the thing is it's your dreams it's your life and nobody will live it for you I know it's hard I can tell it because I've been there I'm still there but the difference is that my mind is just like girl you will do it you have to do it no matter what happen or people say you have to do it it's your life first and nobody lies no matter how long it takes you will 
I know it's hard because when you start dreaming about, I don't know, a project and you want to see it happen, I don't know, in a month, in a year, and you don't have the support, the financial support, even the family support, you think your project is it's not it's not a good project. No. If you have that project in mind, I mean that's the reason that you have that project and I'm sure that God gave you this project for a reason. It's not just about you. It's about the people that you will impact with this project. It's hard, but you have to know that you have to seek God. You have to talk to God because I it's always he is always there. If men or women are not there, God will always be there for you. So get on your knees and just say, God, I'm actually in this situation. I'm alone and I don't know how to do it, but I know you're there for me. Guide me. I'm here to seek your concern. So it will just show you the way you will have to do and it will be your strength. You won't you don't have to do it alone. There's always a God and God will start putting people in your life that will really support you and get you there. It's okay if it's the support doesn't come from your family or your friends. But never forget that we are in the world, there are seven billion or more, even more people in this world. There will always be one person who will love what you are doing. So stay true to yourself. Believe in yourself and you will get there. No matter how long it takes, you will surely get there. That's what I believe. And I would like to say to people. Yes, I love all of what you just said. And you're exactly right. You will surely get there as as long as you believe in yourself and you allow God to help lead you there. I yes. love it, love it, love it. Because that makes you feel like you're never truly alone and you're always going to become in contact, I believe, with people that are meant to help you. I think that you just have to be aware and, re and receptive to the fact that God is always speaking to you and that these people are showing up in your life and that he is always speaking yes. and telling you what to do next. You just have to be open and receptive to that. So, That's true. Thank you for sharing that. You guys, I would yes. love it if you could connect with her on Instagram and follow her blog because she is someone that is delivering genuine concern and passion for other women and even some men I'm sure can benefit but particularly for other women around the world and if you relate to her story yes. that you can get through any and everything as long as it's something that you really put your mind to doing and you take mm. the action steps to doing it. I believe that sometimes we think that we need to have two to three hours a day, for example, to work on our gift or our passion, and that's not the case. You could spend 20 minutes a day, and by the end of the week, look at how many hours that was. And by the end of the month, look at how many hours that was. By the end of the year, just spending 20 minutes a day, look at how many hours that was compared to you just sitting around dreaming and thinking about it. So they yes, that's true. Action on a daily basis, 20 minutes at the minimum, is enough for a lot of people to actually make movement and to see the results from that movement. You guys, if you would like to share your story as well, and you believe that other women particularly can benefit from it, reach out to me. All of my contact information is in the description box as well as Nellie. You can reach out to me and Ask me questions about how to identify what your life purpose and career purpose is. I specialize in that area along with holistic health and keeping ourselves healthy so that we can actually carry out our purpose. So if you need help in that area, reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you. And if you're also looking for a community of ladies that you want to connect with on a deeper level that's going to help you to live a purpose-driven life, connect with me in my Nutrition for Busy Women Facebook group. That's a Facebook group where we talk about nutrition from a food consumption standpoint, but we also talk about it from a complete mind, body, soul perspective. So join us and we would love to have you and encourage you as well. Share this out to anyone that you believe can benefit from it. And until next time, remember to live simply, meaningfully, and purposefully so that you can feel your best and most fulfilled. You guys have an awesome rest of the day and I will talk to you soon.